Hello everybody, Treno here, and welcome back to another episode of War Thunder. Or more specifically, War Thunder Patch 1.51. Yes, it has, it has actually been released. It, this was ridiculously quick, this patch. They only opened the dev server like twice, and I'm pretty sure that was only a week or two ago. This is probably one of the quickest patches I can remember, at least. So in this episode we're going to quickly go over the patch changes, uh, the patch notes, uh, tell you what's changed within the game, uh, additional vehicles, uh, game mechanic changes, etc, etc. Um, so let's get straight on to it, um, starting off with Great Britain. Now I haven't mu got much time to actually look at each vehicle in that much depth, plus I have looked at them in depth on the dev server, which I'll link you to, my um, dev server episodes. But the first uh, vehicle is the Firebrand TF4, a new carrier vehicle, or aircraft. Um, it's sort of a, it's a bit of a fighter bomber. It carries torpedoes, bombs, rockets, uh, up to a thousand pound of bombs, or uh, you know, one torpedo or eight rockets. Uh, pretty big aircraft. Uh, max speed four hundred and twelve miles per hour. Battle rating four point seven. Uh, the next aircraft is the Hurricane Mark Four. Oh, just Mark Four. I thought it was Mark Four B for some reason. So we'll take a look at that very quickly. Again, two forty millimeter cannons. Uh, battle range 1.7, sorry, um, it's a pretty fast, you know, and it's pretty low battle rating, and it's got two 40mm cannons. Now, difference from the dev server is it can actually get, uh, what's the word for it, Hefe T, High Explosive Fragmentation Incendiary Tracer. Um, in the dev server it only had armour piercing, so that'll make it better for dealing with enemy aircraft. Now, we move on to Japan. Um, now I'm not going to look at the new models of aircraft because I've, again I've looked at them in the dev server. Um, Britain does get a Hurricane Mark II B with a new model, but again this is just a graphical update. Uh, Japan's got the J2M5 and the J2M5 Premium and the Ki-44. J2M5 Raiden uh, regular battle rating 5.3 for 20 mm cannons. Uh, two are t Mark II and two are Mark I. Uh, again, and it carries 60 kilogram bombs, uh, like most Japanese fighters. Got your standard armor. Uh, again, not much difference uh, between the J2M5 and the J2M3, from what I can tell. Uh, J2M5 is a lot, a little bit faster though. Uh, they're both the same battle rating, so Gaijin obviously didn't think there was enough difference to warrant changing the battle rating. J2M5 Premium has got two 30 millimeter cannons. No, nope, I don't want to order that. Uh, so this will be, you know, for taking out heavier aircraft, bombers and such. Uh, it's got a decent rate of climb, 18.2 beats a second. 3,850 Golden Eagles and battle rating of 4.7. And does it carry, no, does it carry any bombs? I believe it carries 260 kilogram bombs. Yes, it does. Uh, we'll quickly move on to the Ki-44 one. Uh, pre preview, uh, again, two... 12.7 mm machine guns, two 7.7 mm machine guns. Pretty nice looking aircraft, very slim, and pretty good rate of climb, 21.6 meters a second. Doesn't carry any bombs, but you can change your ammunition. This would be good at intercepting bombers if it wasn't for the quite bad armament, but battle rating 2.7, the bombers aren't going to be that powerful, I don't think. Uh, don't think there's anything else for Japan. Go to the USSR which has got, I think, pretty much all premiums. Uh, some loadouts have been removed for the, uh, where is it? Oh, the R2 Type 3M. They actually removed, yeah, they removed, um, they, re they removed some uh, weapons or modifications. I've really bought all the unbought stuff, but I don't know what they've actually changed about it. It doesn't mention in the patch notes anything other than new model. Um, but again, we're not looking at the models today. I will link you to my Dev Surfer episode where I did look at them. Uh, we'll look at the Hurricane Mark II B, which is a lend lease aircraft, and the Russians have changed it. It's actually faster than the regular Mark II B, and it's got two 20mm cannons and two 12.7mm machine guns, and it's got the nice little Soviet camouflage. I do apologise for my voice is going, been a bit ill with the last day or two. Now, as you can see, you've got your change, standard ammunition loadout, and you've got, you can carry eight rockets, so change your ammunition and carry rockets which is you know pretty good uh, the next Russian vehicle is the Yak-3 VK-107 it's basically a Yak-3P but it gets one less cannon uh, one less B-20S cannon I've lost it ah here it is and 
it's quite a bit faster, 444 compared to 397. Uh, quickly give you a look of it. It's 6,090 Golden Eagles, which seems a bit of a rip-off for me. Um, personally, I don't really fly Russian aircraft, so for others it may be a bit different, but it's a nice-looking aircraft. I uh, don't think it carries any bombs or anything. No, um, just change your ammunition loadout for the 20mm cannons. Oh, the Hurricane Mark II B, by the way, is 1,000 Golden Eagles. Forgot to mention that a minute ago. And it's a battle rating of 3, um, which is good. The... Mark II B is a battle rating of 2.0, oh, yeah, 2. Um, in the dev server, the Hurricane Mark II B lend lease was quite a bit lower, which um, caused a few complaints. The Yak 3 is a battle rating 6.0. Now we'll look at the new Russian vehicles quickly. Starting off with the T26 IV, which is it's basically a T26, but they've put a T28 turret on it. Um, it's pretty bad armour all over. It's 15mm all over, basically. It's got three or four crew, uh, if I can find X-ray, three crew, uh, gunner, or loader, commander, driver. Um, again, like I said, not particularly great armour. I'm not going to be looking at the ammo in depth. For, well, like I said, I'll link you to my dev server episode where I did look at it in depth. Um, but it's basically a T-28 cannon, I believe. The KT-28. T-28 carries the... Oh, it carries a slightly different turret, but I can't see it being much different armour penetration-wise. Um, I'll quickly show you with the uh, armour-piercing high-explosive ballistic cap. 32mm at 0 degrees, 500 meters. Um, Okay for Tier 1, but again, like I said, not very good armour, so going to be a bit of a glass cannon. Now, the next vehicle is the T-10M, which is a slightly less armoured version of the IS-4, if it will load up. Um, as I've said in my Dev Server episode, around the front here, 54 degrees, effective thickness 230. If we go to the IS-4 quickly, it's a little bit thicker, uh, effective thickness, and it's got, you know, it's got a steeper slope, 61 degrees. Uh, it's 140 at the front there. On the T-10M, it's about effective thickness 120. Um, so it's, you know, it's got less of a slope, it's... Uh, not quite as thick, it's got less effective thickness. It's got this bit here, um, this sort of plate here, 50 degrees, a uh, bit, you know, not quite as thick as on the IS-4, uh, so it could be a weak point, but uh, you've got some weak points up here, which are like about 200 millimeters or 140 in this case, but they're gonna be hard to shoot. Uh, but really, it's not gonna cause that many problems, I don't think, as much as with the uh, IS-4. I hear a lot of complaints about the IS-4, and but I've played the higher tiers, so I don't know how valid they are. Got four crew. Um, gun, it's got new ammunition. It's got armor-piercing discard in Sabo, 325mm, 0 degrees, 500m, or Heat FS, high-explosive anti-tank fin stabilized, 400mm at 500m, 0 degrees. Basically 400mm at all um, ranges at 0 degrees. So that's the T-10M, and we've got the T-34-100. It's basically, from what I can see, a T-34 with a 100mm turret on it. Uh, the Egyptians actually be built a T-34-100 as well, but um, with a different 100mm turret that um, makes it look a lot weirder. Um, I got confused at that tank at first, but uh, like you can see, it's basically normal T-34-85 but with a different turret. Uh, again, 4 crew, uh, 6,090 points again, seems a bit of a rip-off to me. Um, again, standard armor, ammo, 188 millimeters, 500 feet, zero degrees, and with the best armor, that only goes up to 197, so 11 millimeters better. Oh, sorry, nine millimeters better. So, uh, suppose a good, okay tank at 6.3. Not particularly something I'm looking forward to that much. Probably won't buy it myself. Now the SU 100Y is battle rating 5.3, and it is. I think it's almost as big as the mouse, but with much less armour. 60mm all the way round. But it makes up for that with a huge 130mm cannon, which can do 179mm at 500m 0 degrees, or 45mm with high explosive. And it's got six crew, two loaders, a commander, gunner, machine gunner, driver. And you can see they've actually modelled all the 
naval stuff from this gun because I think it is a naval gun. You've got this huge horizontal aiming drive, huge vertical uh, aiming drive. It's just ridiculous. But yeah, it'll be easy to easy to destroy. But if that gun sees you with only 25 seconds reloading, you know that's going to be a huge problem for some people. Uh, we'll go to the Germans next. They haven't really got many new aircraft. They've got the R2 1943. Uh, or 1942, sorry, uh, premium, which I've said before, I don't think they really needed. Comes with less loadout, so so you know it's a bit not quite as effective as the Russian R1942s. Uh, like I said, only 200, 250 kilogram bombs. Also gets the Dornier A17E1, which is an early tier bomber, which Germany does need. Uh, can carry 20 50 kilogram bombs or two 250 kilogram bombs. Doesn't really carry any armour from the looks of it. It's got three machine guns, two turrets, one for the um, pilot to use. And they're all in this place of the aircraft it's at the front, so should be relatively easy to take them all out with one quick burst from machine gun fire. Uh, battle rating 1.7. Uh, I think that's pretty much all the new aircraft. There are some new models for the BF 109E1 and E3. But again, I've, I've looked at them on the Death Surfer episode, which I'll link you to. Now Germany gets a few new tanks, it gets a new reserve tank, uh, Panzer 35T, you can see I've already got some stuff unlocked for it, not particularly great gun, uh, with the best ammo, APCR, or sorry, yeah, APCBC, 46mm at 500m 0 degrees, but again tier 1 battle rating 1, bad armour, it's 25mm all round, and there's rivets, you know, with spalling if that's been introduced now, that's going to cause quite a few problems. It's something like, is it four crew? Yeah, four crew, crew, driver, machine gunner, commander, loader. So, okay for tier four, but it's going to be penetrated by anything. Any shell's going to take out practically the entire crew in one hit. Uh, the next new tank is the Leopard 1 at battle rating 7.7. .7. Now, this is kind of the opposite of the uh, T-10, in that it's slightly armoured and, you know, quite fast. But it has a huge problem. Well, like I said, it's got less armour. Effective thickness 120. But it has this huge ammo rack at the front. Next to the driver. There's four crew, by the way. Uh, we've got commander, loader and gunner. Uh, any shot is going to penetrate here. Hit that ammo rack and just blow up the whole bloody tank. It carries, it carries 60 shells. So maybe you can load less or something to get rid of that. But then you've got another ammo rack behind it. And then behind that you've got another ammo rack. So three ammo racks for you to potentially hit and blow up. And then if you don't blow any of them up, you can still hit the loader. So that's going to be a problem. Now this has the same ammunition as the Russian tank. Uh, the Heats FS is basically the same. I think the discarding Sabo may be a little bit less than the T-10. Uh, if I double check quick. Uh, yeah, when I'm quickly double checked. This isn't quite as effective um, with armor piercing discarding Sabo. But it also gets Hesh, which... Um, Penetration of 145. Um, it doesn't really work like that. It's sort of it's high explosive or it's sort of plastic explosive. It hits the armor, it pancakes, and then explodes, and that causes it's, it doesn't cause penetration, but it causes a shock waves that sends bits of the armor and the inside of the tank flying around, um, which isn't good for the crew when the inside of your tank starts, you know, falling apart or the armor, you know, huge fragments come off. Um, Again, this is battle rating 7.7, .7, so not quite the highest battle rating. Pretty fast, not particularly great armour. And that ammo rack is going to cause a huge problem. And the last German tank is the NBFZ, um, which is basically a Russian, Russian German T-35. Uh, six crew, I believe. Uh, two machine gunners, uh, driver, loader, com gunner, commander. And it's got the 75mm gun from the Panzer IV and the 37 from the uh, Panzer III. So with heat, 75mm gun does 80mm. With the, what one's best, armour piercing composite rigid? No, armour piercing HE in the 37mm, it does 500m, 52mm um, at 500m, 0 degrees. Armour is not that good, it's um, quite bad. Uh, for 1.3 and it's a huge target. You know, it's basically 20 millimeters at the max. Even with sloping, you only get to like 30 odd millimeters. And this is 1,750 golden eagles, which seems a bit expensive. 
uh, where's the Russian SMK? Um, yeah, the SMK is 1,300. That's way more effective than at tier 3. Or was it tier 3? Oh, it was at tier 2, but high tier 2, battle rating 3.7. And the NBF said is tier 1 is 500 points more expensive. Uh, that doesn't really make sense to me. I don't know why they've done it like that. Um, but now we move on to the Americans. And they've got, again, new models for the um, F2A 3 and 1. They've also got new aircraft, the A36 and the SB2C1C. Now the A36 is based on the uh, P51. Basically it's a P51 for dive bombing um, and attacker role. It's got some basic armour, not great, armed with six machine guns. And they've added the bomb loads, that wasn't here on the dev server. Uh, two 100 pound, 250 pound or 500 pound bombs. Uh, battle rating 3, uh, 9200 RP to unlock. Um, and they've also split this line into two. You've got the bomber line and the attacker line now. Before it was um, sort of meshed into one. You had the naval attacker and the army attacker slash bomber. Uh, the next vehicle is the SB2C1C. Again, looking at modifications, it's attacker, dive bomber, or naval bomber. One torpedo or two 250-pound, two 500-pound or one 1,000-pound bomb. It's got two 20mm cannons and a turret at the back. You can actually see this bit around the tail. Apparently they had bug reports about that not being finished, but apparently that is actually meant to be like that. Um, something interesting is they've actually modelled armour on the gun, which I don't think they usually do. I hope they're going to do that on all the guns to help um, introduce additional protection for the crew members. Uh, you've got your standard armour and bulletproof glass around the pilot. Um, don't think there's much else to say about this aircraft. Battle rating 3.3. Uh, RP 11,000. So that's all the American aircraft. We move on to the American tanks, the Super Hellcat and the M60. Uh, we'll preview the Hellcat first. It's basically an M36 Jackson turret on an M18 Hellcat, basically. This is. There's not much to say. It's got two APCB seed shells. Uh, the second one's actually worse than the third one, at 500 metres at least. Um, but it does sort of do better at longer ranges compared to the uh, stock ammo. You can also get APCR, uh, 500 meters, uh, 278mm penetration at 0 degrees. Armour isn't that great, it still seems to have a placeholder stack card for turret armour at least. Um, you can see that's 30mm thickness, but the turret's armour and the stack card is 12mm. Standard crew, uh, you've got your four, 5 crew, machine gunner, driver, commander, loader, gunner. I think this will be pretty good. a pretty good tank. It's still got the same speed as the Hellcat, I think. 45 miles an hour. Hellcat has, yeah, 45 miles an hour. Unless that's a placeholder still. But we move on to the M60 quickly. Now, this is a bit of in between the T10 and the Leopard 1. It's got better armour, effective thickness at the front, uh, 180 odd. It's got a decent turret armour, you know, quite well sloped. Sides, it's not very good, and the rear is quite bad, but um, the front, at least, is, you know, relatively good. It's got this weird cupola at the top. They've added, like, a machine gun turret off of, um, what's the tank's name? Oh, I'm trying to remember it. The M3 Lee. They've added this weird machine gun turret thing at the top, um, which I can see being a bit of a weak spot. Um, I don't know why they added that in real life. I can't see why they thought to add that. But then again, in real life, you didn't have super accurate guns like we do in game, but that could be a bit of a weak spot. Uh, the commander sits there. Again, four crew. They've got rid of the machine gunner, driver, commander, gunner, and loader. And this is done one better than the Leopard. It has two ammo racks at the front. You've got an ammo rack here on the left. You can go through the ammo rack, hit the ammo rack behind that, and then hit the loader. So two chances of setting off ammo and killing the loader. If you shoot in the middle, kill the driver, chance of setting off this um, ammo here at the back. Hit the right, hit the ammo here, and potentially take the leg off of the gunner. So, yeah, that's going to cause some problems. Um, but it's got decent armour to deal with that. And again, it's got armour piercing discard in Sabo. Not quite as good as the T10s, but it's got the same Hesh and the same Heat FS. 400mm with Heat FS, 145mm with uh, Hesh. So now that we've looked at all the new vehicles, uh, what other changes have been made in patch 1.51? 1 
Now if we go to the Panthers, uh, it says here changes in vehicle models. For all vehicles of the Panther series and self-propelled guns, external screens on the lower part of each vehicle have been added and accounted for in the damage model. So I assume it means these bits, which I don't think were modelled before, in, at least, or well, they didn't count as armour. Now only 5mm, but that could help a little bit um, against heat. I think it's meant to disrupt, it's all counts as spaced armour, which is meant to disrupt the jet it sort of gives out. And you know with the armor model system, it might cause the occasional bounce. Uh, you know, it's better than nothing, but again, not expecting huge changes out of it. Uh, again, looking through the patch notes, multiple tweaks and fixes to the shape, shape and thickness of armor elements on several vehicles. Uh, fix the number of crew members displayed for the KV-85, change from 5 to 4. So have they actually removed crew, or is it just telling the wrong number or something? Uh, just check. We're on the... Uh, stat card. It doesn't mention crew, so I'm assuming they've moved a the crewman. Um, we'll quickly check that. X-ray. Yeah, there's only four crew in there. Um, so either they've removed a the crewman who wasn't meant to be there, or there was, it, it, or it did actually say the number of crew somewhere that I just can't find, and then you know, and it gave the wrong number. But uh, did, did it mention something in information? Uh, it doesn't seem to mention how many crew are here. Um. Yeah, so I assume they just had an extra crew member in there for some reason. Or they displayed it as an incorrect number somewhere else, um, which I can't find. Uh, next patch patch changed. Uh, armour for the Yak-7B has been fixed. Removed non-existent armoured glass. Uh, Yak-7B, so was there not meant to be armoured glass on that or something? Uh, we quickly check that out as well. Oh, they've removed the ar yeah, they've removed the armor from there. So that's going to be a bit of a problem for the X7B pilots. If you're going to head on, you're going to be a lot easier to kill. You've still got your arm at the back, but again, only eight millimeters or so, so not great. Uh, next patch change: they fixed the uploading custom camouflages for the Hurricane Mark One L and the ME Two Six Two A One U Four. Uh, I can't really show that because I don't have any custom camouflages, but um, yeah, they fixed that apparently. Fix the display of offensive weapon re damage models for the HS129B2. Wait, fix the display for offensive weapon re damage model. What does that mean? Does that mean they've changed the armor, or is there, or are they not showing all the out, um, loadouts or something? Um, again, I don't use it. Uh, you can attach additional cannons. Is um, that the difference? Again, I've never used this aircraft, um, so I have no idea what they've actually changed. Um, we checked the armour. I did hear some complaints that the armour wasn't modelled properly. Um, again, I, I get, I've never used this aircraft, so I don't, I don't know what I'm looking for. Um, the patch note isn't exactly that clear. Uh, uh, yeah, it seems to have standard armour. Seems to be okay armour. Um, again, they've uh, that's all the weaponry that you can unlock. and uh, not really sure what this change means exactly. Um, if I find out, I'll add um, some information to an annotation or something for the video, but again, I can't really see what they've changed. Uh, next patch note, uh, added missing armour for the HE-111-16. Uh, so we'll check that out. Additional armour, or yeah, added missing armour, that's pretty good, because the HE-111s in general, I think, are kind of placeholders from Gaijin's last game, was it Birds of Steel, I think? Um, so they all needed a lot of updating graphic wires and armour. I think some of this is new. I could be wrong though. Again, I haven't used this aircraft in a while. And again, it's not much armour. Oh, they've added bulletproof glass to the uh, rear gunner. So that's definitely good. 60mm rear glass. And I suppose if the angle's right, it will stop some bullets going near the uh, pilot, which is good. You know, or slow it down and maybe his own armoured chair will block the shots. So this isn't going to help much against higher caliber weapons, but against the lower caliber weapons at lower tiers, this may, you know, help the HE-111H16 somewhat. Uh, you know, it's a very good change. I'm glad they've added the missing armor. Uh, next patch change: uh, fix the display of offensive weaponry for BB-1 aircraft and SU-21 lineup, um, or SUT lineup. I don't know why I said SU-21. Uh, check the BB-1. I'm not sure what they've changed again does it mean they weren't showing some of the uh, bombs you could carry or something oh, it doesn't really make sense that sentence or maybe I'm missing something really really obvious or I, I probably am 
Um, I, I'm not really sure what what they mean, display of offensive weaponry, or do they mean when you're flying it doesn't show the uh, bombs being carried or something? Or there's something I haven't unlocked with the S2, SU2. Oh, I was thought maybe they'd added new bombs. Um, but again, modifications. Uh, yes, yeah, I assume they just. I'm not really sure what they mean by that either. Maybe they just mean uh, this sort of line wasn't showing up properly. But again, I'll add an annotation if I find any different information on it. Uh, we've got one of the next patch notes. Uh, we've got a new map, Finland. Uh, we've got a new event in the game called Enduring Confrontation. Now, I haven't played it, but from what I understand, it's uh, quite a bit different from what we have at the moment. It's like you get these really, really long battles with um, unlimited lives. You start off with lower tier aircraft, and as you, or as time goes on, you unlock points, you get high access to higher tier aircraft, and there's specific um, objectives. So, fighters have to go for enemy aircraft, uh, attackers have to destroy AA emplacements, tanks, and stuff, and the strategic bombers have to destroy, you know, strategic targets. And obviously, as you complete these objectives, you get more points to unlock new air, your, you know, higher tier aircraft, and you get nearer to victory. Um, these ma battles are meant to go on for hours and hours, and I think you can join the matches whenever you want. So that seems quite a good idea. Um, I used to play a game called Battleground Europe, which was that was an MMO, uh, first-person shooter type thing. But it's, uh, it seems to be sort of heading towards that direction. This game mode, um, but, you know, a lot less time and. Uh, it's going to be realistic and simulator battles, I think. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's confirmed for realistic and simulator battles. Uh, perhaps this is to gather in, um, data for the World War mode, which I haven't heard much about in recent months, so I assume it's towards um, gathering data for that and, you know, improving that game mode. I do apologise about my voice going a little bit. I've uh, been a bit under the weather the last day or two. Uh, new air, air, aircraft arcade missions have been added. Uh, Apple Gardens has got ground strike. Approaches to Moscow, ground strike. Uh, Kalkin Gull, Saipan both got ground strike. Uh, Gorge and Foothills have front line. And for realistic missions, Corsan and Mostok have both got front line. So, I haven't played that game mode much, but it was quite fun when I did play it. You've got like, it looks like twen trench warfare. You've got these two lines of machine guns and artillery, that sort of stuff, and then you've got tanks coming in from behind those lines to do battle in no man's land, uh, or force a breakthrough. Uh, not sure about adding it in realistic battles, but I had fun with it in um, arcade. Um, again, in the patch notes, there have been changes to, you know, all, lots of different maps. Uh, Krimsk, Jungle, Eastern Europe, Carpathians, Karelia, Bright Rock, uh, Fortress and Battle of Herc and Forest. So these are all ground forces maps. Uh, crimps have removed a known unfair vantage point. Areas have been flattened. Don't know what vantage point. Uh, jungle removed known unfair vantage points. Uh, Eastern Europe balance changes have been made to the cap central capture point. Carpathians added a new shelter position. Some changes to unfair, unfair winning conditions. Karelia, some changes to unfair winning conditions. Uh, balanced White Rock Fortress balance changes to the northern capture point and Herc and Forest balance changes at the third capture point. Now again, I haven't really played a lot of those maps in recently, so I don't know what all those changes mean, but uh, they may mean something more to those of you listening. I uh, thought it best to read them out at least. Just going to swap the camera so we're actually recording the patch notes, because I don't think there's much um, else to show in-game at the moment, but we move on to research and economy. Uh, the amount of research points awarded for the destruction of ground vehicles uh, now uses a similar system to aircraft battles, and vehicle BR difference will be also, will also be considered. Now, this is a pretty major change, because they actually changed how much research points you got from ground forces, like they put it right down um, quite a while back. Uh, basically, the problem was there weren't many tanks, people were unlocking them very quickly, um, I think the argument Gaijin used was that there was a lot more opportunities to get kills, it was a lot easier to get kills than with aircraft, so they reduced how much RP you could get. Now that there's more tanks and for three different nations rather than two, they, you know, obviously they've put it up again, uh, maybe not to where it was, or maybe not on par with ground vehicles, but, you know, a lot higher than it was before, so this would be quite good, this is a very welcome change, uh, for me at least. Uh, the amount of research points awarded for the destruction of ground vehicles has been slightly increased, again to do with the above point. Uh, added missing traverse adjustment drive modification for self-propelled guns. Uh, Panzerjäger, Panther, Panzerjäger Tiger, 
uh, Tiger P Ferdinand, ISU 152, 100Y, SU 100, 122, 1254, 152, 85, 90, 43, and the 85M. Oh, that was a lot to say. Uh, again, the lineup for the US nations has been changed. Uh, like I said, one for bombers, one for attackers and dive bombers. New damage model. Uh, a new indicator for ground vehicle and aircraft damage model has been introduced. Um, I believe it now sort of shows a bit more clearly when you're in game itself. I haven't tested this myself yet. Uh, a new system for tracking shell fragments has been introduced. Uh, more complex and unique shape and different fragments uh, with different amounts of energy. Uh, works for secondary shell fragments and the metal jet of hate grenades. Again, I haven't seen this used yet. Um, I haven't really played a game since the patch came out, so hopefully that will make the damage model more accurate, but I could also see that causing more, uh, you know, uh, unlikely events to do, and probably causing a bit of complaining, because you know there's going to be one fragment that just sort of does something it really shouldn't do and get someone killed in game. And, uh, but, uh, you know, hopefully this will make it more accurate, the damage model. Uh, increase the efficiency of piercing projectiles with discarding sabre against sloped armour. Uh, increase the efficiency of flat he headed shells and armour piercing ballistic cap shells on sloped armour inclined at a 60 degree angle. Uh, fix the ballistics of piercing projectiles with a discarding sabre. Uh, cross section on which ballistics will be calculated correspond to the core size of the projectile, not to the projectile's sabre. Or sabre, sorry. So I'm assuming that when it was calculating the size as being you know, the whole thing rather than the actual projectile that, you know, hits the tank once the sabos have fallen off. So again, hopefully all these changes make the damage model a bit more uh, realistic and accurate. Uh, weaponry, Hesh has been added, uh, causes fragments to hit targets inside the vehicle due to spooling. Doesn't say if they've added spooling for all projectiles, because um, I believe all projectiles that don't actually penetrate do cause a bit of spooling or uh, should be able to you know, there's a chance of creating spawning in real life. So I don't know if they've added spawning in general or just for Hesh. Um, heat, heat FS, the heat with uh, thin stabilised shells have been added, uh, have a much better penetration but cause less spawning than with common heat shells. Which kind of implies it does that all shells can create spawning now. Um, but again, it doesn't really say for definite. Uh, we're just swapping back to War Thunder again because uh, the next change is actually in game. It's the addition of the BP367P. I assume they mean this APCR because there isn't a BP, but there is a BR367P. Um, armor piercing composite rigid. Uh, 500 meters, it can do 211 millimeters uh, penetration at zero degrees, which is quite a bit better than any other shell it has. Um, 211, the next best shell does 143. Yeah, the next best shell does 143, so it gets a boost of like 60 odd millimetres, or possibly 70 odd. So yeah, that's going to be quite a big change at um, battle rating 6.3. That's going to make the T-44 quite a bit more powerful than it already is. Now, other than that, uh, changes in flight model. Now, I'm not going to go through all of this, because um, there's just so many aircraft here. I mean, I'll link you to the patch notes, of course, and you can look through them. Um, Again, just lots of changes um, to flight models and like the KI-49 improved stability whilst in level flight. Uh, M1K2, uh, new flight model, uh, and then lots of changes like specified the calculation for the airflow on the horizontal tail surfaces. Uh, again, I'm not reading through all this because it's just so much here. It would take me all day to read through all this. Uh, well, actually, the TA-152 I'll look through. Uh, flight model has been completely reworked. Reworked aircraft behaviour at high speeds. The higher the speed, the greater the effect. Um, reading through it. Uh, engine performance has been adjusted. Reduced compression and overheating. Um, well, the reason I looked through the TA-152H quite quickly is because it's meant to have sort of a two-stage engine and part of the engine wasn't working properly for high altitude. Um, I don't know if they've changed that, but, you know with the flight model being completely reworked. Hopefully they've changed it, or at least started to change it. A new system has been introduced, orders. Uh, we can actually look at that quickly. Um, in, we will make battle trophies available in game, orders. Uh, any player in arcade and realistic battle, battles can become a commander. At the beginning of the battle, or at the beginning or during the battle, an order can be activated. Uh, for fulfilling the order, players receive an in-game currency reward. Only one reward, sorry, only one order can be active at once. Uh, 
and players from both teams could complete it uh, can be gained as battle trophy or bought in an item store. So uh, that's not entirely clear for me, but um, does that mean you as the player get to complete the order or do you make the order and others complete it? Because um, it says it's available for both teams. Um, but some of the orders like collect as many points as possible within the allotted time, destroy the marked targets within the allotted time, uh, maximum tar number of targets five. Uh, I I did actually look through the item store a few minutes ago. I can't see anything about the battle orders on there. They're not showing up at the moment. Um, so again, maybe I'm missing something, but it doesn't seem to be all that clear uh, on what it actually is. Like whether you receive the reward or anyone can receive it, and you just happen to be the one who like activates the order. Uh, uh, yeah, it doesn't really seem to make all that much sense for me. Maybe it's to just focus your team, like, you know, order them to attack enemy targets or something and give them an incentive to do so. Uh, no, another new thing with the interface, uh, added a function that allows the marking of locations of enemies in combined realistic battles. By landing a shot on an enemy with your main gun, all players in your team will, for a limited time, be able to view the targeted enemy lo enemy's location on the minimap. So that's quite a big difference, because that will show the enemy on the minimap if you shoot them for all your team. Um, I don't know if I like that. I mean, it kind of makes sense if you saw an enemy in real life, you would think you would radio where they are, but um, I don't know. I suppose it's an okay change. I, I do wonder how that's going to play out. Um, you know, it might need tweaking a little bit. Um, but yeah, I suppose it's an okay change now that I think about it. I was a bit worried at first, but... I suppose it depends how long in limited time is as well. Are we talking 10 seconds or, you know, uh, a minute? Or I assume it's only going to be a few seconds. Uh, next interface change. Tags for Britain, Britain carrier-based aircraft have been opt optimised. Uh, unnecessary and apparently duplicating tags have been removed. Um, a tax, uh, when it says tags, I assume it means, you know, when you look at an enemy aircraft or friendly aircraft or... Um, again, I've never really ran into any problems with tags, so not sure that's going to be much of a big change. Now, one other thing I've noticed about the interface that I don't think was there before, uh, they've changed something to do with the crew. Uh, you've got this thing up here, Crew Info. Uh, gives you basic uh, details about the crew, how many points, their level, qualifications. And it shows, uh, you know, pilot training, vitality, repair, or repair as they call it, uh, reload speed. It just tells you the most important basic stuff. I don't know if tanks have something similar. Uh, preset 2, process and op operation. Yeah, it's got another thing here, crew. This one's called crew repair. Um, again, same information. So I assume this is the most important stuff um, here, so maybe that can help you prioritize where you spend your crew points. Uh, settings. They've changed the method of saving user settings, so they're stored separately for each account and divided into two parts. Uh, one is synchronised between all player devices, general settings, vehicle preset settings and settings, and the other is individual for each uh, device, control settings, colours, fonts, etc. Now I'm hoping that will um, help me, because my graphic settings keep resetting every few patches. I'm hoping that will stop that from happening. Um, Hopefully if it's synchronised it will, you know, stop it from resetting or something. Um, but again, I'm not really sure if this is going to affect me that much. Uh, moving on to sounds, over improved overall sound environment for air battles, new sound for shells striking the ground have been added. Uh, conditions for unlocking uh, some camouflage has been changed, multiple decals for ground vehicles and aircraft have been added, and added winter camouflage for vehicles that don't already have them. And for all Soviet grounded ground vehicles added woodland camouflages. Um, again, I'm not reading through that entire list because that is a bloody big list. So that's it for today's episode on patch 1.51. I think they may actually be changing how they do the patches from now on. I think they may be doing them at a more regular interval but with maybe less stuff in each individual patch. Or they might be doing a one big patch and then a small patch and a big patch. Uh, you know, so they can get round to adding new stuff, new vehicles, and then, you know, fix new stuff in the next patch. Quite happy with some of the uh, fixes they've made, uh, such as the armour for the HE 111 16 and the new models. Good to see them going back over older stuff and fixing or improving it. Um, things I'm kind of would have liked to have seen in the patch. Uh, would have liked to see the Hawker Hunter. Uh, would have liked the Germans to get the HE 177 or. Japan to get the H6, um, H8K or Russia to get the MBR2 uh, float plane. Uh, 
America got quite good planes. A bit disappointed we didn't hear anything about the Italian tech tree. We were meant to get it the end of last year, then it was, we were told, spring of this year. Uh, it's now summer, and I was hoping this would be the patch that introduced something about it. But, you know, like I said, good patch all around. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, leave a like if you did. Subscribe if you like these sorts of videos. Uh, leave feedback, could always do with more feedback. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.